Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys a as complete of an explanation as possible to gradients inside of GIMP. So we're going to be covering the basic gradients, where you can find them, how you can use them, creating your own custom gradients, modifying existing gradients to change things up a bit, and also how you can apply gradients to different elements of your image, such as if you want the gradient to only apply as an overlay for text. So basically, you have text that is in a gradient form, a very common application for gradients actually. So to get started, you have the blend tool in the toolbox. If you have single window mode selected inside of GIMP, which you can do by going into windows and then single window mode. And in the main toolbox, which you can open up over here on the left, uh, if you need to open it still, you can go to windows, stackable dialogs and tool options. But anyway, you're gonna find a tool called the blend tool which actually looks like a gradient, a very simple gradient where you transition from one color into another. If we click on that tool, it's going to pop up with a set of options inside of tool options right below. And the main one we need to focus on here is this little selecting tool, where if you click on it, you can choose from all the different default available gradients. Now, um, there's nothing stopping you from going online grabbing more gradients if you don't have the one you want here. You can also create your own custom one, as I mentioned before. But uh, let's just demonstrate some of the basic gradients. So first I'm gonna open up a new document and I'll just leave it at my defaults, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. Usually what I use for thumbnails, by the way. Um, so now that we've come in here, we can actually apply some of these gradients. Uh, the first few gradients that you'll see in the list, probably some of the most commonly used ones as well, are foreground to background. Now that's referring to the two colors you have selected here in these uh, basically color selecting tools. Uh, the one that is on the top left is always the foreground and the one that's on the bottom right is always the background color. You can toggle between these if you hit this little switch icon. So you see how when you switch these two colors, it's actually switching the colors available here in the gradient selection and the uh, more detailed gradient panel over here in the bottom right. You might not have that open by default. So when you have the first option selected, a hard edge gradient, that means that whenever one color stops showing, the other color is going to start showing with no blur in between. There's actually no transition. So by default, as you saw before, I had the spiral shape selected. If we do that with a hard edge, it's gonna look something like this. So I'm clicking and kind of dragging in the direction that I want the gradient to appear in. Um, so the main thing here, the important thing is actually the center point. You see that wherever I put the center point, that's where everything else appears around. But if I do something like change the direction, it's kind of changing the starting point a little bit. And I don't want to make you guys go too crazy with that spiral. But aside from having a spiral two color shape here, uh, the main thing to note once again is to notice that there's no blur between the lines. It is a hard edge, as in, it's either one color or it's the other color. There's absolutely nothing in between. Now, if we go a little bit lower here, to foreground to background color RGB, that means using RGB colors, and you can see it's got a soft edge here. Uh, all three of these selections are actually quite similar. Um, so I'll just go to RGB, uh, because that's red, green, blue color. That's what most people know. So when we apply, a FG foreground to background color RGB gradient. So with this variety of gradient, you do still get the hard black line here, and there should theoretically be a spot in there where it is completely white. And I think in that case, it's actually right to the right of this line. The gradient actually is transitioning from one color to the other in a uh, standard repeating fashion because the spiral is always going to go around in a circle. Um, there's not going to be an end point for that. So you can see how it starts at this little white area where it's 100% white and then it transitions until it gets to 100% black and you have this hard edge at the end uh, creating the spiral that goes around in a circle. Now to show you that in a way that might be a little bit easier to understand, let's use the shape drop down here that's right below the gradient selector and we can change that back to the default gradient which is linear. There's also other shapes in here as you can see. Um, Really looking at the icon is the best way to explain how the shape's gonna work. So if we have radial, uh, basically it's gonna have a center area and it's going to work to the outer edges. So in this case, it's going from the foreground color, which is black at the center, and going all the way outward. 
uh, kind of creating an eyeball-like effect. But the easiest one is linear, where we pick a starting point, we pick a direction, and it's going to just transition from the foreground color to the, uh, the background color in the direction that we chose. So you can see the uh, starting point was about here. That transitions until we get about there. Um, then after that, I think the gradient actually ends because we don't have repeat set. So for some of these shapes, you can optionally choose repeating. So if we choose sawtooth wave and we do the same thing, it's going to look roughly like this. So you see uh, transitions from the black to the white, but when the gradient ends, it repeats itself. So that's using the most basic foreground to background color gradient. And honestly, a lot of the gradients are going to be using are just going to be those because a lot of the other extras down here are a little bit more on the uh, kind of wild side. So abstract two, for instance, if we do a standard linear abstract two gradient and I drag from the starting point to the end point, it's going to look something like this. Doesn't really seem like the kind of thing that has so many practical applications, right? We can show off a couple more. Just remember, every time you want to change one, you just click down here. Uh, let's see if we can find something a little bit more useful. So a wood gradient. It kind of gives us colors which would simulate having uh, actual wood on a hard surface. And you might be able to uh, find some applications for that. For instance, if you have an area in your image that you actually want to apply a gradient to, what you can do is you can use these tools in the top left, Rectangular Select, Eclipse Select tool, and we can specify the specific area that we want the gradient to apply to. So now that I have a square box selected here, anything we apply is only going to happen in that box. So if we apply a wood gradient across this area, no matter how I draw it, the only area which is going to get any of that gradient effect is the box we have selected. Uh, you can also of course add that on to new layers a good option honestly so that uh any changes you make if you decide you don't like the ones you make on one specific layer you can just delete that layer and not have to start from scratch um so let's see let's say we wanted to apply a different gradient over here i will go down uh, let's just try tropical colors and uh, maybe we'll do a different shape so how about conical symmetric and i'll just kind of pull this from the center up gives us kind of a wild effect. Uh, maybe you would take that and you would actually apply, let's say a border around it or something like that. So you could right click this because it's already selected. Go to edit, or right click and then edit, and then stroke selection. And we could apply, I don't know, like a 15 pixel stroke around the edges there. And now in a sense you have like a framed portrait. Now, as you may have noticed over on the right, we do have this gradients box popped up over there. If you want that to appear, whenever you do click on this gradient selection tool, there's an option in the bottom right hand of the corner, which is open the gradient selection dialog. If you do that, that is actually going to pop open this window over here, which because it gives you the names of them straight up, it might actually be an easier way to select the gradients from your list if you are working in gradients a lot. So that's one good option there. So one of the things you can do pretty easily in that panel is to create new gradients. You may notice in the very bottom right hand corner or at the bottom of this section here, there is a new gradient button. If we click on that, we can create a new gradient. Another option is to right click anywhere on this list and choose new gradient. Also note, you can duplicate gradients if you want to have a starting point um, based on one of these other options there. So I'm gonna hit new gradient here. Uh, you can see it gives us basically the standard foreground to background color gradient. We can change the name in the top right hand corner. So I'm going to call this custom 2 because this is eh, the second one I've created on this instance of GIMP. So in this gradient editor, we can see that our custom 2 gradient we have currently selected has a middle point indicated by the white arrow, start points and end points indicated by the black arrows. Now we can't move the start points and end points because there's only one middle point in this current gradient setup. Um, there always has to be a start point on the far left and an end point on the far right. But we can move this middle point. So if I drag this middle point, uh, you'll notice that there's kind of this line here where the middle actually happens at. And by dragging the left, uh, the, the middle point handle over to the left, it's kind of condensing everything that happens between the left end point and the middle point. 
and spreading out everything that happens between the middle point and the right hand end point. Uh, basically, because there's more room for this effect to happen, this transition from the middle color to the end color, it's spread out across a larger distance. So if we apply these changes as a gradient inside of the main document, you will notice those changes immediately. So here's that middle point I was talking about showing up. Uh, you may actually not want it to be such a hard line there, which is a little bit of a problem, but we can work through that by improving the gradient. But you'll notice that this transition from this black over here, which starts about right there, to this middle point is very, very fast in terms of pixels across our document. But then the second section, everything from the middle point to the end, takes much larger amounts of space in terms of pixels for that to occur. So the relation of your middle point to the left end point and the right end point is going to matter in that regard. Now, let's say that you wanted more end points inside of your gradient. You want a more complex gradient than just a transition from one color to a second color. We can right click, and that's gonna give us a drop down menu with a series of options one of which is split segment at midpoint. If we click that, what's going to happen is that our old midpoint becomes a endpoint now for this middle point and this middle point, which have just been added. And we have more detailed control over our gradient. So because we have more points to drag and drop here, we get more control over how our gradient actually looks. Now, Let's say you want to actually set some very specific colors for this gradient. You don't want it just to be black over here, white over there, and some shades in between. Whenever you want to change colors, basically endpoint colors is where you change it. So this color will appear here and the color will appear here. Or if I click over here on this section, the color here and the color here, um, we left click on the section indicated by these blue bars that we want to edit. Then we right click and we can choose right endpoints color, left endpoints color, which is going to mean that uh, if we have a right endpoint color, it's going to be transitioning up to the color we select until it gets to right here. But if the left endpoint color is set to something different here, it's going to have a sharp drop off when it switches over to this section. Uh, you'll see what I mean right as soon as I change it. So I'm going to change this just to a red. And you see now how it transitions from black to red for this part of the gradient. But then immediately afterwards, not even a pixel sooner, it starts at the gray because that's what this left endpoint is set to. So if you want a smooth transition from this section into this section of the gradient, the right endpoint over here and the left endpoint over here should be set to the same value. So I'm going to grab this color in HTML notation, and I'm gonna go into the left endpoint color editor I'm going to paste that color in, hit OK, and now it's transitioning from this red color on both sides into whatever the endpoint color is over here and whatever the endpoint color is over there. So let's try applying the gradient one more time in our document. Okay, now you can see that we still have some pretty hard lines. When it reaches this endpoint on both the left and the right, although they have the same color set, we still have this very strong, very visible line inside the gradient, and we might not actually want that. So what we can do is if we right click on this and we go to blending function for segment, you can set it to spherical, which is going to have a much more smoothed out transition. We can also go over to the right hand side and change the blending function for segment to, I believe, spherical decreasing now because uh, we're decreasing from that point, where here we're increasing to that point. Um, and now if we apply that same gradient, it should look a lot smoother. We could also add on the repeat again, if that's something we're looking for. Um, so obviously, if we were going to repeat and we wanted a smooth transition, we would also want the right endpoint over here and the left endpoint over there to be matching colors with a more smooth transition, uh, so that the gradient repeats in a way that it doesn't have these hard edges. So we can do that. Uh, I'll right click over here and let's change it to maybe something like a blue and I'll copy that HTML notation. Apply it over here as the left endpoint color. And now if we do the gradient, um, it's going to repeat in a fashion where it's more seamless. 
obviously that's still kind of tough on the eyes because of those very extreme colors so that might not be what you're looking for but hopefully you have a general idea of how you can actually edit and create your own gradients here inside of GIMP. That's kind of thing where you're going to want to play around with maybe lighten up some of the colors that you see here. Uh, we could actually do that really quick so lighter colors might mean a lot more towards kind of a grayish blue rather than a very deep blue so we can try that right here and apply it and that's actually a lot easier on the eyes. The red might be too intense as well. So that's how we can edit our gradients inside of uh, GIMP and of course you can go change any of the default ones as well but what I would recommend is whenever you want to change a default gradient duplicate it first and then edit the duplicated one instead. So abstract 3 copy you can name it custom 3 or just keep it abstract. You could change the name to abstract 4 or whatever floats your boat and then Make your changes as you need to here. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys is how we can apply gradients to text. I've already shown you how we can apply gradients to a selected area by basically using our selection tools and then applying the gradient over those selected areas. But to do that with text, we first need to actually type some stuff out. So I'm going to put this at, uh, let's say, font size 200, big noodle titling, one of my favorite fonts here. And we're going to say test gradient application. So now we have some decent default colored text, but it's not a gradient. If we go into the right click menu and edit, you might notice we have tools to fill with color, fill with background color, and fill with pattern. Now that will fill whatever selection you have currently. For instance, if I do fill with pattern, it's going to take the entire text box, not the actual shape of the text. So in order to select just the shapes of the text itself, we actually need to right click on the text element in the layers box, go to alpha to selection. Now we have a perfect selection of the outer edges of every single one of these font characters. That's what we're looking for. Now we could go back to the menu. You can do fills. You can do fills with pattern if you want. Uh, patterns being similar to gradients, but uh, more like a shape you pull in that repeats. What you may also want to do, I mean, obviously there's a lot of cool patterns here you can apply. So here I'll just apply another pattern. And you can see that's pretty cool as well. But to do it with a gradient, it's very similar. We have to have this section selected. And if I control um, C a couple times, you'll notice that while we have that layer selected, it actually removes the text element. We might actually want to do this on a new layer. So we still have this, uh, this selection actually chosen. Uh, but now that we're on a new layer, it won't permanently override the text. So now we go to the gradient uh, blend tool. We select our gradient. So we could say foreground to background RGB, uh, none for the repeat. And with the colors you want selected. And now with the colors for our gradient selected, we just simply choose the start point for the gradient, the end point for the gradient, let go, and let it do its thing. So now we have a gradient applying on our layer only over the areas we have selected through that alpha 2 selection. So if I disable this layer now, you can see that the text is still just as uh, in the same way it was before. We can still edit that, but we have this layer on top of it where the actual gradient is hovering above the text, giving us the image where we have text-based gradient. So that's just about everything you need to know about gradients in GIMP. I've even shown you a little bit about patterns in GIMP, very similar kind of fashion. I hope this tutorial helped some of you guys out there who are getting started in learning GIMP, and I will see you guys in my future video content.